I just heard like back in the day, man, like I would always like guys like uh, would, I wouldn't even say their names, but just I heard like way, way back, probably even rock radio days, like you used to be able to like get your record on if you dropped off like a, a eight ball of cocaine. You're, like <laughs> Some of these like rock PDs in the 70s, you know? Yo, like, man, it, it was a it was a different it was a different environment because um, when I got to when I later became the PD of JBTN SOL. Got to remember, SOL is on the urban adult panel, right. and JBT at the time was on the rhythmic panel, not the urban panel. It's on the urban panel, of course. Yes, and JBT is on the rhythmic panel. So I I come from St. Louis at KMJM, so I knew every you know all the all the urban people. Of course. So now I have this whole slew of people that I don't know, most of whom are white. And you talking about the record reps? Record and all reps, that? Yeah. yeah. And it's a totally different vibe. Right. Like I I, I was. I remember Hitman Hayes, who's in... Um, He's in San Diego. San Diego now, yeah. was my music director at the time. I remember walking to his office one time to ask him, and, uh, and he's on speaker, and some dude is just like yelling at him, like, oh, you bet your ass about the fucking... It was like, a record rep? Yeah, and I was like... So I was like, mute, dude. I was like, yo, who, who is that? And it was, it was a record guy. Oh. I said, and he's talking to you like that? He said, yeah. I was like, hang up on him. He said, what do you mean? I said, hang up on him. You got it, yeah. So I just hung up on him. I was like, man, like, I, I don't ever want to hear you letting somebody talk to you like that again i'll fire you yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying and, and uh you know our our relationship was great at that moment he still works in the company Hayes was, is great but it was just so different to see how you the know reps the, were. the reps were different and you know it, it was great for me because i had an opportunity to meet all of those people and mm -hmm. i've had relation long-standing relationships with people on both sides of right. the, the equation but even, yeah even me like when i got hired at real technically yeah it was the first Urban, urban station, I ever worked at. Ever work so at? I obviously yeah. worked at tons of hip hop stations, but there's yeah. hip hop stations on the rhythm panel. Yeah. Yeah. So coming to Rio, yeah. I'm meeting all these record reps. I, you know, I had before I never had a relationship yeah. with a guy like Dwight or you know guys yeah, exactly. like that. And it's exactly. like, oh shit, there's it's like a whole new group of guys. And, and we be. should probably explain the whole idea between rhythmic and urban. Because Correct. So for people who don't crazy. know, yeah. Hot 97 is a hip hop station, but it's on the rhythm panel. Yeah. So there's a rhythmic chart. Yep. And there's, uh, I believe, around 60 stations that report to it. Probably. Give right. or take, yeah, right? Yeah. So Power 106 in LA that we're smoking in the ratings, uh, Hot 97 in New York. Those are hip hop stations that are on the rhythmic panel. Got it. On the urban panel, yeah. there's a ton of stations on the urban panel, a lot more stations, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, typically. But, th but there's a story behind that, too. Yeah, what is that story? The story behind that is let, let's just keep it real. Rhythmic stations play predominantly. Black, black artists, hip hop, one hundred percent. Most of the jocks are white. Most, most of the program directors are white, and, and then, out of touch and weird and <laughs> cringy as fuck. I'm, I'm not trying. To, I'm just. I'm trying to just. No, you're it's right. Just the facts. Listen. And so, then on the urban panel, most of the majority of people, black. Are, most of the talents black. And most of the programmers most are black. Most program director, directors are black, and on the record side, most of those people are, are people of color. So, here I am. Uh, I started overseeing the urbans for the company in two thousand. And around 2003 was the first time we decided to launch Power in New York and working with Steve Smith, Tom Pullman, who's still my boss. That's crazy. Steve Smith helped launch that station. Yeah. And he launched Hot 97. That was my guy. R.I.P. God rest his soul. Yeah. And so then the conversation comes up and they're like, okay, so yeah, we're going to put it on the uh, rhythmic panel. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Not me. Yeah. I'm the head of Urban. Yeah. <laughs> Black dude, New York City, this is my city. I'm not putting a hip hop station on and putting it on the rhythmic panel. And they just, it, the conversation was literally about two seconds. And that's one of the things about I loved about Tom mm -hmm. to this day, Great guy. at the time. You're like, you're right, it should be. And so then fast forward 15 years later, we get ready to launch Real. Same thing? Two second conversation. Nope, I don't do that. Like, So they, would, they wanted you to run it at, on the rhythm panel? Yeah. Oh wow! But that—that's jobs, man. You know, we create jobs when we put an urban on in no, New for York, sure. and power is still an urban. We created jobs when we put um, real on in LA. Yeah. Same thing in Houston with the beat. Same thing in Miami with mm -hmm. the beat. Same thing. Um, but one of those things I know for me personally was important for me to do, and it was important that our company supported us because I was like, like that's crazy. Like why would why would we do that? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And I always didn't understand the. This is like kind of getting into some inside baseball, but I never yeah. really understood the lack of urbans on the West Coast in general. 
Yeah. Like I think of a station like KMEL, right? KMEL yeah. is an urban station, but it's not. Yeah. It's on the rhythm panel. Yeah, you know. But it's like that's a. It's like is that the? I think that might be the first hip hop station, KMEL. On the West Coast, I think it was the first. It might have been. I think so. I, I'd have to do my. But it's just. It, but but yeah. yeah, it's it's some real radio nerd shit. But yeah. it's definitely like if you're an artist, right? And like maybe you are because a lot of up and coming artists watch the podcast, like. You you got to kind of make a decision if you have a record and you have a budget, yeah. which chart you're gonna chase, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like I want to go to the rhythmic side, I want to go on the urban side, I want to go on the top forty side, yeah. and then you make a decision from there. Yeah. So. It's it's actually crazy because when, if you looked at our playlist for real in L.A., we have rhythmic sensibilities for right? sure. There's Bad Bunny yeah. getting played, Absolutely. Steve Lacey Absolutely. got played, yeah. you know, for yeah. sure. And it's a function of our audience. 100%. You know, our audience here is predominantly Latino mm -hmm. with some African American. And, you know, you go to Atlanta, it's totally different. You go to LA, I mean, you go to New York, it's totally, totally different. different yeah. And, you know, usually the playlist is a function of the diet that that audience was fed upon. Where here in, here in LA, the diet was more rhythmic. Right. And so as you put a station on here in LA, Gradually, like when I launched it, we launched it like it was an urban station, mm -hmm. but gradually it's begun to take on. It's like its own thing. Yeah, yeah, its own thing because of the feedback from the audience.